do you feel? How do you feel? Let me know. Talk to me in the chat. Good. And you should feel pretty good. You all should. You are rocking it. Now it's time to talk about HCC and risk adjustment. So let's get to it. What is HCC coding? Well, HCC coding stands for Hierarchical Condition Category Coding. It's a risk adjustment model originally developed by CMS or Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services for CMS to estimate future health care costs for patients. That's big. To estimate future health care costs for patients. The HCC model is used in Medicare Advantage plans and certain Medicaid populations and increasingly in other types of health insurance plans. But initially and mainly Medicare Advantage plans and overall the goal is to predict health care costs. Does anybody know what a Medicare Advantage plan is? Well, a Medicare Advantage plan, yes, it is Part C, but it is, um, It's like an HMO or a PPO for Medicare. Yeah, it's an HMO or a PPO for Medicare. M Medicare beneficiaries give up their Part A and their Part B and they take that Part C or Medicare Advantage plan. Yeah. So that means you have to stay in the network. That's what it is. All right, so this HCC coding is a risk adjustment model and the goal is to predict healthcare costs. Now, what is risk adjustment? Well, it adjusts payments to health plans based on the health status and demographic characteristics of their enrollees. The idea is to provide higher payments for sicker patients who are expected to incur higher medical costs and lower payments for healthier patients. So why is risk adjustment necessary? To ensure accurate reimbursement, 
to aid in quality of care for financial planning and management. That's why it's necessary. Now, how is risk adjustment or HCC coding carried out? How is it carried out? Well, annually, providers are required to submit information to CMS on each Medicare Advantage patient. So all patients that are enrolled in a Medicare PPO plan, CMS requires providers to submit information on them so that they can predict the health care costs or the cost it's going to or what it's going to cost for them to cover that patient. So this is Medicare. They want to know how much is it going to cost us to cover that patient? How many illnesses does that patient have? Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so coders must review each patient chart, review the patient's documentation, then capture or code all of the diagnoses or diagnoses that maps to Medicare's HCC model. What does that mean? That means they have to capture all of the required diagnoses. And we're going to take a look at what the requirement is. And providers receive a capitation. They receive a payment in the form or a capitation based upon what they submit to CMS. And four, the number and severity of the diagnoses based upon that CMS model will indicate or determine the capitation payment. If patients have higher severity and higher number of diagnoses, then they get more money. So providers need coders to help meet this CMS requirement. CMS says, hey, you have to do it every year and the providers have to get busy. They have to get busy analyzing data and documentation. So how do they do it? Well, they code only diagnoses and the diagnoses that follow the meet criteria. What is MEET? Well, MEET is diagnoses that are monitored, evaluated, assessed, or treated. Now, it's a little more than that, and we're going to look at it even more. Let's look at even more closely. So, when we say monitor, diagnoses that are monitored, coders have to code, have to evaluate a chart and code or capture all diagnoses that were monitored. Now, what does monitored mean? It means that signs and symptoms were monitored or the provider ordered or reviewed and referenced labs, tests, disease progression or disease regression. So they monitored the signs, symptoms, and they also ordered or reviewed tests, labs, disease progression or disease regression. Also, coders will have to code diagnoses that were evaluated. What is that? When it tests results were evaluated. Medication effectiveness was evaluated. Physical exam findings and responses to treatment were evaluated. Then also diagnoses that were assessed or addressed. Well, what does that mean? Well, these diagnoses were discussed and patient acknowledged, the doctor reviewed records of, of those diagnoses, documented the status, the level and conditions and counseling for those diagnoses. Or finally, 
treated, if the diagnosis was treated, how? By prescribing continuation of medications, referral to specialists for treatment, consultation, surgical or other therapeutic interventions, and plan for management of conditions. This is considered treatment. So if a diagnosis was monitored, evaluated, assessed, or treated, you can capture it or code it. Well, what do you mean, Mrs. J? Well, I can show you better than I can tell you. All right, well, let's go back. All right, so. One second. Hmm. All right, so now here on the left is our documentation. We've got a chief complaint. There's a 74-year-old African-American male with BPH, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Ongoing symptoms of frequent urination, returning to my office for follow-up visit. The past medical history is stable, diabetes mellitus, arterial sclerosis, and below knee amputation. The history of present illness, patient has been experiencing frequent and urgent need to urinate. This increased at night. His urine stream is very weak when he urinates. His PSA test results show 5.0 NGML. PVR shows 120 milligrams, or excuse me, mm, mm, I don't know if that's right or not. But anyway, ultrasound confirmed in large prostate. The plan, Avodart for LUTs associated with BPH, referral to oncologists to rule out prostate cancer. All right, all right, all right. Hmm. So I inventoried over here. I have BPH, if we go in order, BPH, frequent urination, diabetes mellitus, arterial sclerosis, below knee amputation. And then at the end in the plan, it says BPH with lower urinary tract symptoms. So maybe I would code BPH with LUTs, and then I would probably also sequence um, frequent urination. And that's all I would, would capture. But, but, no, I wouldn't even capture the, the would I? Hmm, hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I would capture the frequent urination, but just to let you know, coders, I would not code any of the following, only BPH with LUTs and maybe urinary fre uh, frequent urination. Here's why, because these diagnoses were not meat. They did not fall under meat. All right, so I got rid of BPH because it is included. It is um, integral to BPH with LUTs. But if we look at diabetes mellitus, did the provider monitor, evaluate, assess, or treat? No, it was not, it was not meat. And all they said was the patient has stable diabetes mellitus. This is a past medical history of stable diabetes mellitus, arterial sclerosis, below knee amputation. That is it. The doctor did not meet. And you might say, well, how do you know if it, how, how do you know when they do? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so this is an example of poor documentation. Now, you know what I wish I would have, let's do this. Let's do this, hang tight. I think I want to, give you a better, yeah.
Thank you for your patience. I'll be right there. I just want to clean up the next slide after this so you can see it a little better. But um, this documentation here is very similar. However, the documentation is written better and also more appropriate for us to capture um, more codes. All right, so the chief complaint, we have a 74-year-old African-American male with benign prosthetic hyperplasia plasia with lower urinary tract symptoms. Returning to my office for a follow-up visit, past medical history. We have a type two diabetes mellitus, stable below knee amputation, right leg, arteriosclerosis with history of acute myocardial infarction three years prior. All right, history of present illness. Patient has been experiencing a frequent and urgent need to urinate due to BPH. Right here in the HPI, we, we see meat actually, um, you know, we're able to, to apply meat. So this the need to urinate is increased at night. His stream is very weak when he urinates and PSA test results show 5.0 NGML. Now the post void residual vom volume test showed 120 M, which indicates incomplete bladder emptying. All right, so we see that BPH with LUTs was A, it was assessed. All right, so if we say that the, the provider, we're gonna say it's assessed, I have an A here, the provider discussed the patient's condition or the urinary symptoms, you know, with the patient. So he, the provider said, well, the patient said that he had the need to urinate, his need to urinate at night was increased. Also, the patient told the provider that his stream was very weak when he urinated. There's no way that, um, the provider would know that the patients, um, you know, increased urine or had um, enuresis at night because the provider was not there. So discussion of the problem took place. Also, I said evaluation was met because the, um, test results of the um, PSA test results and the post void residual volume test that was evaluated. Also, monitoring was met because signs and symptoms, the lower urinary tract symptoms such as frequency, um, what else? There was frequency, nocturia, that's um, urinating at night, and the weak urine stream, that was monitored. And treatment also took place. Because if we look in the documentation, I'm gonna keep going. All right, so next we had, so Next, I stopped at bladder, incomplete bladder emptying, and that's another urinary, lower urinary tract symptom. Um, we have ultrasound confirmed in a large prostate. That's another monitoring. And the patient states, now we're moving on from the BPH and the LUTs, and we'll return later. The patient states that the diabetes mellitus is stable Review of blood sugar reading from the patient shows good management of diabetes mellitus with glucophage, 500 milligrams twice a day for diabetes mellitus. And the patient's exercising three times per week to help control diabetes mellitus. All right, so diabetes type two mellitus can be captured, encoded, because it MTEs. We have monitored the test results were monitored. 
right? So it says signs, symptoms, ordering, and reviewing and referencing of tests or labs. Yeah. The blood sugar reading. Also, we have treatment. Glucophage, glucophage is the um, medication, 500 milligrams treatment. And let's see, evaluation. So I think the patient exercising three times a week, I, I think that is um, the physical exam and findings and response to treatment is a good example. And you might find others. All right. And now it's time for us to move on in the documentation and the doctor starts talking about the below knee amputation. Right leg below knee amputation is stable. Scar is within normal limits without signs of inflammation or infection. That's what he says. So he clearly evaluates the below knee amputation, physical exam findings. Now we're going to move on in the documentation and we see this lipids panel with LDL, HDL ratio. We see the cholesterol, total 191 MGDLs, triglycerides 103 MGDLs, HDL cholesterol 45 MGDL, VLDL cholesterol 21 MGDL, LDL cholesterol, calcium 125 MGDL, and that's high, LDL HDL ratio 2.8. All right, so it says patient will, con will continue with low sugar diet to control weight, heart disease, and diabetes mellitus. So when we're talking about these um, lipid panels, and these LDLs and HDLs, we're talking about the heart, right? Yeah. We want to see how much cholesterol this patient has, and we want to see those if those arteries are doing well, arteriosclerosis. So the arteriosclerosis was evaluated, those test results, and assessed or addressed by um, discussion, discussion or counseling the patient on weight control. Okay. All right. Now the plan, Avidart for LUTs. That's a medication and that's a treatment. That's where I put my T. Okay, coders. So as you can see, these five were meat. They've met the guidelines for meat. So we can code them in HCC coding. I know that was a lot. All right. So remember, you have to follow all guidelines. So instructional notes are going to require that you code the urinary tract symptoms, such as urinary frequency. I didn't pick them up, and I should have. Nocturia, the weak stream, incomplete bladder emptying. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick them all up, and we're going to code them all. And that's how you capture the diagnoses that maps to the HCC model. Now I'm going to show you, and this, this image comes from your book, I'm going to show you how you compare. So on the left is an example of poor documentation that was our first scenario. And because the documentation was poor, we were only able to capture N40.1, which had a risk score of zero. And that would have been the total risk score. Now with the proper and the good documentation, we were able to capture a lot more diagnoses. And some of them had scores attached to them, like the diabetes mellitus type 2, the um, below knee amputation. So both of them 
produced a risk, a total risk score of 0.624. So this is why they need coders. Providers need coders annually to go through the documentation, capture all of the, the diagnoses that max to the model or that fall under the meet criteria. Are you all with me? And that's HCC coding. That's it. So HPI, great question, is past, excuse me, history of present illness. So when they come in, it's basically a chief complaint, but a, you know, more extensive chief complaint. All right, good job. So now we're going to test your knowledge. Yeah. All right, Miss Ida, please and thank you. Which of the following statement would be an example of documentation that would meet the assessment portion of the meet documentation review strategy? A, lipid profile ordered. B, A1C results reviewed with the patient. C, decreased sensation of BLE by monofilament filament test. D, advised on risks, smoking, cessation counseling. Okay, now the key word was assessment. All right, so assessment right here is by discussion, acknowledging, reviewing records, documenting status, level conditions, and counseling. Yes, yes, yes. The answer is D, advised on risks, smoking cessation, and counseling. That's it. Also, too, in your handouts, I have an extensive um, document that kind of describes um, the MEET um, documentation standards. So go ahead and download it. It's also in your LMS. Okay. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay. This is the last one. All right, Miss Ida, please and thank you. Okay. CMS. Hierarchical condition categories, HCC models use data to A, predict long-term prognosis for individual patients, B, predict estimated future costs for individual patients, C, analyze treatment options for individual patients, D, predict mortality rates for trauma-related conditions. Outstanding. Indeed, remember I said predict cost, predicting estimated future costs for individual patients. That is what this is about. You all rock. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, happy coding. Yeah.